So who needs long-term care? At the moment in the United States, there are about 12 million people who are using long-term care services that we know about. And about 6.4 million of them are 65 years of age or older. And that may come as a surprise to you that not quite half of the people using long-term care services are younger than 65. And this that group of people younger than 65 includes about 400,000 children. As I said before, most of the people using long-term care services live in community settings rather than nursing homes. And in particular, they live in their own homes. Among the older people, that is those 65 and older, living in the community, so I'm not including those who are living in a nursing home, about 30 percent, or one and a half million, have substantial long-term care service needs. And remember our definitions of the types of services that people need, whether these were activities of daily living or instrumental activities of daily living. When we say that about 30% have substantial long-term care service needs, we're talking about that they, need, they have problems with three or more of these activities of daily living. About three quarters of the children who need long-term care services, so this is about 300,000 children, were born with the cause of their need for long-term care services. These primarily are mental health and developmental disabilities. Those are the two top reasons for children needing assistance of a long-term care service. About 8% of adults between 40 and 50 years of age have a disability that could require long-term care services. So one thing to be thinking about is as people get older, not just older as in 65 and older, but as they progress from 18 to 30 to 40 to 50 to 64, they are increasingly at risk for having some type of either an accident at work or in a car accident or an illness that leaves them with a disability where they require help with these activities of daily living. And about 80% of adults who are 45 to 64 who do need long-term care services developed the disability in adulthood. Most of these are physical problems, which relates to the point I just made, that these problems often occur at work or through a car accident or some other accident, perhaps on a vacation. Adults who live alone are more likely to need paid care rather than this informal or unpaid care, which adults living with somebody else generally receive. So here think of a couple or perhaps two sisters or brothers living together after age 70, perhaps. One of them will die before the other, but the one who dies first is receiving care from the other sibling or spouse but that means that the person who's left alone is the one who is more likely to need to pay for any long-term care services. And finally, when we look at cognitive impairments, it is important to recognize that that's a big cause of why people need help with these activities or instrumental activities of daily living. There is a prevalence of cognitive impairments that has grown in the recent decades. And so now, more than a third of people who reach age 85 have moderate to severe memory impairments, and they need help, particularly with these instrumental activities of daily living, like managing their finances or using a telephone, or perhaps even using a computer. So next, we're going to look at how we pay for this long-term care now that we know who actually needs it and what we mean by long-term care services.